Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Georgian. My name is George Ansisco, and I'm the Education Director of the Old State House Museum. And I'm Daniel Cockrell, I'm the Adult Education and Living History Coordinator at the Old State House Museum. And today, we are standing in the exhibit about uh, concerts at Barton Coliseum. We are. This is a wonderful exhibit, and I encourage everyone to come down and see this amazing exhibit. But we're actually not really here to talk about Barton today. We want to focus on Nudie Cohn, who was an amazing designer and created fantastic stage costumes for so many performers around the world. And we are fortunate to have a number of those in our collection. That is true. And I think that many people would recognize his work and not know it was his work. Absolutely. He was so featured on the Grand Old Opry and, and for many stage shows, this amazing outfits were actually his design. That is correct. So, Nudie Cohn immigrates to the United States from Russia in um, 1905. He was 11 years old and he meets his wife here. He ends up work, he gets a start in New York City actually, creating G-strings for the burlesque performers. And you know, rhinestones and dazzling stuff and, and that, that pretty much sets him on his mark. And eventually he and his wife move out to Hollywood and they, they settle there and they, they start uh, designing clothes for, for people. And Nudie loved westerns. He loved yeah. old cowboy films, and but he felt like there was something missing with their costumes. Yeah. You know, just the, the plain white shirts, the plain black shirts. He really thought they needed some extra dressing up. And, and so he, um, he approached a number of his friends, uh, like Arkins and Lefty Frizzell, right. and said, you know, if you have the guts to wear something I designed for you on stage, I will design your stage clothes. And Lefty says, of course, yeah, that sounds great. Let me pay you. And, and Nudie says, no, I will pay you later if yeah. this works out. And of course, the rest is history. Yeah. Um, he designed for so many stars. A lot of the Arkansans, like this one, Conway Twitty right here. One of Nudie's clients was Conway Twitty. Sure. Daniel, tell us oh, what you know Con about Conway, Conway Twitty. Conway Twitty, <laughs> uh, as we know, is one of these amazing Arkansans. He's uh, from Helena, Arkansas. His name was Harold Jenkins. Um, he starts out in a very uh, kind of an Elvis style of, of stage show, very clean cut. Then he moves chooses Conway as his first stage name from Conway, Arkansas in Twitty, Texas, and gets known as Conway Twitty. Hello, darling, very famous. This piece, though, you can tell by the detail that it's a nudie piece. From the time period and the detail, the hand stitching, the, the texture and the layers, there's three levels of fabric giving this this 3D look from uh, the camera. This stuff's meant to be on stage under big lights with camera, with a lot of style, flash and bling. The embroidery, the pearl buttons on the shirt, and the rhinestones on the collar and the cuffs, those are all trademarks of Nudie Cone's design style. Sure. And of course, we have this fantastic blue polyester fabric from the time period, which has held up remarkably well. <laughs> right. So I want to add a little personal note, uh, a story yes. about Nudie Cone uh, from Marty Stewart, uh, a That's friend right. of the Old State House Museum. Marty Stewart has a huge collection of nudie suits from the Grand Old Opry that he's put together that he let us loan years back. And um, Marty Stewart was here telling us a story of his very first nudie shirt. Uh, Marty, as we know, was a, a, a child prodigy. He was amazing. Um, star of uh, yeah yes. of the Grand Old Opry and he always wanted a nudie suit and he he went out and he ordered a shirt and he asked Nudie he said I, I really want to wear one of your pieces of clothing on tour um, and he, he made him this shirt and it was fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> and, and and Marty Stewart says I can't afford that and he said Nudie told him said someday you're gonna be able to afford this but for now you're gonna take this shirt and wear it and then someday you'll buy a full suit from me. And Marty Stewart did that and owns a lot of nudie stuff. Yes. So that's kind of the character of the man that people don't realize that there's this amazing man who, who helps these artists look like they need to be, to do the that's thing right. they do, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just such, a, his influences go far beyond what we realize when you think about all the amazing artists that wore nudie cone suits. Cher, Elton yeah. John, ZZ Top. Chicago, yeah. America. Uh, his, his influences are extremely <laughs> wild, uh, you know, and, and people won't really know his name no. unless they watch this video, right? But his studio is still open today. That's the right. Run Nudie, by his granddaughter, Jamie. Yeah. Jamie Cohn. And it's uh, still called Nudie's Rodeo Taylor, and you can visit the, the shop and 
Um, they still design clothing and it is very expensive. You can find vintage nudie pieces on Etsy and other vintage sites and they're just unbelievably gorgeous works of art. And, um, but I would like to talk about the Gail Davis Annie Oakley costume in the sure. next room. Absolutely. So now we'd like to talk a little bit about the costume worn by Gail Davis who portrayed Annie Oakley. Georgia, and you know, Gail Davis was actually from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, her, her daughter's still around, and we featured her in a, a movie's exhibit, Lights, Camera, Arkansas. And uh, she goes on, she was a rodeo star before she became a very famous actress. And she stars in a lot of films and becomes the face of Annie Oakley on a television, had her own television show. Um, very famous lady, comes back to Arkansas quite some bit, retires here, I think, as a, the key spokesperson for Coleman Dairy. Yes. And, and, and really was featured at a lot of state fairs. And that, so that kind of ties it back in with the Barton Coliseum. She played shows at Barton Coliseum. She did a lot. Yeah, that's why we're featuring here. Absolutely. And, and this costume is, is one of, it's a fantastic oh, example of Nudie Cone's workmanship. So, you know, initially, Nudie approaches Lefty Frizzell and some other um, musicians in the country western field and says, hey, I'll make your clothes for you if you'll wear them and let's see how this goes. And then he, he decides he wants to branch out. And so he approaches Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. And as of course, of course we know, Dale Evans is also in Arkansas. And um, they were making movies and making music and he talked to uh, both of them and said, I'd like to you know, design some clothes for you, for what you're doing. And Roy Rogers said, I want a costume that the kid in the nosebleed section will be able to see. And Nudie Cone took that to heart. And so that's where you see the fringe coming in. And Gail's costume is perfect for this because on every piece of fringe, you see tons of little rhinestones. And um, Jamie Cohn says that they imported all of those from New York to make them. But you, every piece of fringe is coated with rhinestones. You've got rhinestones and embroidery on the sleeves. You've got rhinestones on that uh, scarf around her neck. Again, the pearl buttons. You've got rhinestones on the boots that she wore with that outfit and even on the underside of the cowboy hat. And all of that is going to help catch the lights and they, every star who wore his costumes would sparkle from, you know, halfway across the world, basically. And it, this helped him make a tremendous mark for himself. And interestingly, Nudie also made cars. He designed 18 cars during his career. You can see um, a number of them still in existence. He designed Elvis Presley's famous uh, gold suit, which is uh, owned by Graceland, and it's on exhibit there. They do have a reproduction of that outfit at their rodeo tailor shop out in California. We hope you've enjoyed this conversation in the gallery about Nudie Cohn today. It's been fun to talk about him. He's one of my favorite artist designers, and I love his connections to Arkansas, and so it's always fun for us to be able to feature him. Sure, absolutely. It's a pleasure to get a chance to go do this and talk about this suit and some of these others. It's just amazing creative work, uh, and those Arkansas connections are really strong with this. this so. And as Daniel mentioned earlier, if you haven't seen the Barton Coliseum exhibit, you need to get on down to the old state house and do that right away. Also, I'd like to say that these uh, images of some of the things that we talked about but not, not featured now are on the e-museum site uh, as part of our website. You can click there and look at many artifacts that we don't have enough space to exhibit, but there are lots of wonderful details about them and stories. And if you have questions, feel free to contact us, us here at the museum. Thanks so much and have a great day. Thank you.